So in life they always say certain things are not created equal even though they look the same. And here's one example. So I'm going to just open up a new document and we are going to choose maybe just a preset here, whichever. So we've got a preset page here. If we save this document now, um, there's pretty much nothing that we need to accommodate here. It's just a blank piece of paper. However, if we do any modifications on it and we want to have all the um, features attached to this document, there are a few considerations. So normally we would just go and say file, save, and we give it a name, whatever that name is going to be. But before I get there, I just want to show you a few things that you should consider. So if we go to file, we see the save, save as. They're pretty much the same, except that if you've saved it already, uh, save as will help you to save it as a different name but there's yeah, a feature save as package and we'll go through that now something that I didn't use that often and I, but I think it's very valuable if you wanting to send it to somebody who uses affinity also and they need all the other relevant files in there and then save history with document this most people ignore but I think it's a valuable feature that you have in there if you are saving documents that you later want to go back to edit. Okay, so when I say save, uh, we can go in and pretty much do a save there on that document. But before that, I am going to do a few things. So I'm going to convert this document into a artboard. So what we do is we just basically click there and I say insert an artboard. Just make sure that this drop down must be on document because you want the whole document. If you had um, a specific area saved, you could make that specific selection into an artboard or you could create preset formats of artboard sizes. Okay, so mine is document, I say insert artboard and there we have it. And I'll just double click this and call this RT there so we know that's the artboard that I'm working with. Okay, but notice down here, you see there's a history tab which I have open here. Now, if that's not visible, of course, you go to your view and you go to studio and you'll see all of these here. And somewhere along the line here, you should see history. There we go. So if that's not checked, you wouldn't see it anywhere. Mine is docked over here next to transform history, etc. But as you see here now, it's recording the history of all my movements, which means that if I want to undo it, I can just move up the, the list here. But let's just put a few things here. Okay, maybe I should choose a heart and choose the heart to be nice and red. There we go. As you see here, it's all recording over here. So that's the history. Um, if I put that in, and I'm going to put different elements. So I'm putting a vector image in there. I'm going to put some artistic text maybe. I'm going to say this is a heart. Okay, so I've got that there and I want to pull in a picture which I want to place here. Let's see if I go to pictures, maybe just a picture here of somebody having a braai. Okay, so now I've got a picture, a vector element and a text element in it. And the reason I'm doing this is to show you something about these save features. Once again, all saves are not created equally. So if we look here, we see the history has gone beautifully. So if I navigate my way back, and this is a different tutorials you can watch where you, you can go back through your histories, or you could go Control Z to move back, but then you, you basically remove the uh, previous settings that you've had. Yeah, you can just navigate through them, and there's other edits you can do in the history to make, you know, jumping in between the histories. But for now, we are busy with these three elements and we are now going to go back to file and I'm going to save the document. Um, I don't have to say save as because it's the first time I'm saving the document, so I'm going to give it a name now. Um, so let's go and say save and I'm going to call this RT here and we just say save. Okay. Now an interesting is going to happen here is that I'm, if I have to close this document and open it up again, um, you are going to see 
that all of these edits are going to disappear. It doesn't save it with the edits, the history. Uh, none of these uh, documents would save it with the undo histories in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now the save as. So I'm going to create a second document and have them open and treat them differently so you can see the effect. So I'm going to save this as RT um, his, for history. Okay, this is called RT history. But what I want to do here now is go and say save history with the document okay so in this case rt his i should have checked this box first but i'm going to just do it now in any case it's going to warn me and say listen here whatever you're going to be sending if you send this document they're going to have all the records of how your undoes and what you did in the designs so be it that's what i want to do i'll say yes save with history and then i'll just go back there and say save again okay so it's saving the rt history now let me show you, this one has been saved with, if you look here, this box is still checked here, okay? So if I want to disable it, I just click that again, but I'll leave that for now. So this RT hist has been saved with the history. I've checked that box and the other one hasn't. So if I close this off, I'm going to go to File, Open, Recent. Now I'm going to go to File, Open, the RT one without the history that I saved. If I open that one, look at the history. The history is totally blank. Same images, everything the same, but no history saved. If I close this one off and I go to open the one with the history, look what happens. It comes in and it re preserves that entire history, which is brilliant because if you're working on this and you save it and close it and come back later, you want to keep that history restored. So I'd suggest that you keep this button checked here. If you're sending it to somebody else, the file, and they're working on their own, and you don't want to have them have access, then of course disable that. Okay, the next thing that I think is essential um, is going to be to understand what save as package is. Yet again, it's most likely if you are saving this file, and later on you are moved, you maybe going to do hundreds of different designs and files and stuff, and you're saving it somewhere. And you find out afterwards that you, you know, your computer crashes and you lose all your fonts and everything like that. And now you've got to search every time you open up a, a new file, it says these fonts are missing. So it's, although it will be a bigger size file, it's great to actually create it as a package when you save these files. Now, it does feel like a bit cumbersome to do it. But just check this out. If I go and I say save as package, so I'm not going save, save as, I'm going save as package. It comes up with this dialog window that this particular document is a summary. If I go there, that's the font that's present here and that's the image that is present. So if I go now and I take this and I'm going to just drag out a copy here and I'm going to change this to, let's choose a, a different font. And now if I go and I say save as package, when I go to fonts, you'll see there are two fonts that are present. And if I say OK, then it's going to ask me to save the package. Now I know this is, as I mentioned, it's a bit cumbersome if, you, if you're working on a document. And, but if you are deciding that you're going to archive this for future use, then I think instead of just saving the file, create a package so that you know everything is contained inside of that. So it's asking me for the folder. I've got to just accept the folder and say the package document. This folder is not empty. Choose an empty folder. Okay. So I'm going to just create one here that's called package uh, RT. Save that and then it goes in there. So it has to have a folder for each package because it puts all the elements inside of that particular folder. And when you want to get this back again as a package, let's just close this and we'll go open. You can see uh, in the package there's the file, there's the images and fonts, everything is packaged together. So if we do that, we're back to square one having everything in there and we can just say OK. And we'll pull in everything with these elements. Just another uh, essential thing to just note also that when you're creating a document, when you go into it, 
you have the option these are all presets but when you create it there is an element over here that says image placement policy for the document you create or the template or preset you create you have to decide whether that template or that preset is going to have an embedded um, elements in it so it brings the elements into the file itself or preferred links in whichever way it works when you do create the package it will manage that but I prefer leaving it on uh, prefer embedded when I create the document okay so that's just a caveat there that you must know when you're creating the blank document which of those elements you're referring to so an image like this in my case is embedded in the entire document if we had to put it as a link you might stand a chance of if that link is broken that when you open the image it's not going to be able to pull through um, okay so that's it to recall I suggest save history with documents if you're working it on it yourself and if you're archiving stuff save it as a package or if you're sending it to somebody that's also working on affinity designer you put it in a package and zip that entire package which is the affinity file the the folder for the fonts the folder for let's see what what was it there let's just go and say open yeah it's the the font will be in there and the images will be in the relevant font so this is the entire you zip these three folders and if there's another folder for some reason with other elements you just zip them together and send it to the person and when they open it up they have all the elements that are there okay have a blessed day and shalom